Hello, my name is Graham Budd. I'm Professor of Paleobiology in the Department of Earth Sciences in Uppsala University. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, some of the work we do in the department about trying to understand the origin of the modern diversity of animals. When we look around us today, we see an amazing number of different types of animals, from zebras to kangaroos to the small insects to whales in the sea. And of course, a question that always arises is, how did this amazing diversity come about? How can we understand where all this richness came from? Well, nowadays we have several ways of tackling this sort of problem. The first way is to look at all the different types of animals we have and try to compare them with each other so that we can try to understand what their last common ancestors looked like. Of course, nowadays we have much better techniques for doing this than simply looking at what they looked like. We can use advanced molecular techniques for trying to understand what the closest relatives are within all the groups of animals we know. And this has been a very successful technique. But unfortunately, it doesn't really tell us as much as we'd like to know. What did the common ancestors actually look like? Can we understand what sort of animal it was that gave rise to, for example, zebras and whales? This seems a very difficult question to ask because the animals we have living today all look so different from each other. Well, if only we had a time machine where we could go back in time and actually look to see what these ancestors looked like. Well, unfortunately, although we can put probes on Mars, we can't build a time machine just yet. But fortunately, we have the next best thing, the fossil record. When we look at the rock record, we see many fossils preserved. And many of them, of course, are simply the preserved shells and hard parts of organisms, such as these two fossils here. These are very well-known types of fossils called trilobites. This one is from Morocco. And this one is a much older example of the same type of organism, the trilobites, which are very familiar, from Greenland. And it's over 500 million years old. And this fossil brings us back very close to the beginning of the fossil record of the animals that we know. Now, as I said, most of the fossil record is preserved in just this way, in bones and in hard parts of shells. But just occasionally, nature provides a real treasure trove for us, and we get an exceptionally preserved set of fossils, which preserve in fantastic detail all sorts of soft tissues, such as the limbs and muscles and guts and many other structures. This picture shows the locality of the Burgess Shale, one of the most famous such fossil localities in the whole world. And here, just over 100 years ago, the most amazing fossils were found. And I have some pictures of them here. This one, for example, is called Opabinia. Uh, it's an amazing animal. It's several centimetres long in real life. And you can see that it has these uh, lobe-like structures along the body, a strange trunk-like structure, and incredibly, five eyes out the front, which are mushroom-shaped. For a long time, this animal was extremely hard to understand. But nowadays, most people think that it's rather similar to another fossil, which is preserved here. And this is called Aishaya. Again, you can see a body a few centimetres long with some little legs along the bottom. What's interesting about this animal is that it's quite like a modern group of animals called the Onychophorans. Thank you. The Onychophorans, of which I have an example here, are an amazing group of soft-bodied animals that are alive today in the southern continents. And what's so interesting about them is they look very, very similar to the arthropods, the familiar arthropods such as the insects and the crustaceans and the spiders. But they also lack many of their features. And what we can do by comparing the Onychophorans, this one's trying to escape, uh, the arthropods, and these fossils together is that it allows us to build up the intermediate stages of evolution of the arthropods and therefore to try and actually understand how this such an important group of organisms such as the arthropods first evolved and how they got all their distinctive features from such simple soft-bodied ancestors. 
So we in our department are looking not just at the fossils, but we're also looking at the animals, trying to understand how they develop, what they look like inside, comparing them with the living arthropods, and then trying to make deductions about the fossils. So it's by taking these two approaches together that we can really begin to tackle some of these very difficult problems in evolution about how the most important groups of organisms alive today had their origin.